This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, Heather Ho, there's Jeff Cutter Daffin. Welcome to another sports catastrophe on the state. And on this day, March the 29th, 1982, the NCAA tournament finally ends with North Carolina versus Georgetown. And the final is known for two big events happening uh, in the final. So anyway, unlike our tournaments, like our normal 6018 tournaments, especially in 2023, this tournament only had 48 schools taking on each other's single elimination play. So 48 schools, not 64. This is actually, well, the 1982 tournament was big for many reasons. Number one was that the third place game, the national third place game, would be eliminated. So that meant that nobody took like a bronze or anything. And this was the first time that NBC had lost the rights to the NCAA basketball tournament. They had it, but CBS would televise the whole tournament and all that. And not till the late 2010s when TNT and the Turner broadcast crew would also broadcast tournament games. Well, ESPN, sorry, ESPN did do some tournament games, you're right, in the 80s as well. I forgot about that. But as is, Gary Bender and Billy Packer would call the Final Four and all that. And this was actually the first time that the men, that the tournament had to have the word men's basketball tournament because the women's basketball tournament, first official tournament was 82. And this was the last NCAA tournament to grant automatic bids to the winners of the of the regional tournaments for Northeastern Division One Independence. All that. Which is kind of weird and all that. So anyway, yeah. Northeastern Independence wouldn't have excluded, but they had to form new conference or joint existing ones after this season. So, yeah, that's kind of hard-pressed and all that. Like, what would this mean for anything? The Division one seventy-three to 81. So, Brooklyn, Trenton, Bridgeport, Uppsala, Monmouth. But, yeah, it's kind of weird, but as is. But UCLA was missing the tournament for the first time since 1966, back in 82. So, the tournament championship game was held between Georgetown and North Carolina. And this was huge for these two schools and all that. So, anyway, the 1982 tournament. Four, 12 teams in each of the four groups. The top four seeds got buys into the second round and all that. North Carolina came, was the one seed. They had a buy. They took on George, they beat James Madison narrowly. They took care of Alabama by five and Villanova by ten, which meant that North Carolina um, moved on. They would take on Georgetown, who were the one seed in the West region, who beat Wyoming by, by eight points. Beat Fresno by 18 and then beat Oregon State by 24. So Georgetown was getting bigger and bigger. Georgetown would then take care of Louisville 50 46 in a tight semifinal. And North Carolina beat Houston by Slam Jamma 68 63. So it was huge. Georgetown was 28 and 6. Whereas North Carolina was 31 and 2. And it looked pretty good for North Carolina and all that. So anyway. Georgetown seemed to be okay and all that. Using the defense. North Carolina was just amazing. 31 and 2. And a lot of people looked pretty good. But the starting lineup of Jimmy Black and Michael Jordan at the guard positions, Matt Doherty, James Worthy at forward, and Sam Perkins at center. Meanwhile, Georgetown had Fred Brown, Eric Floyd, Sleepy Floyd, Eric Smith, Mike Hancock, and Patrick Ewing starting the lineup. Starting the lineup. 
So yeah, Georgetown had some great guys too. They even had a lot of things. So it was just amazing all that. Anyway, both Dean Smith and John Thompson, the respective head coaches of North Carolina and Georgetown, actually were part of the 1976 Olympic team, like, as coaches. So, anyway, it was just amazing. So, the tournament would be hosted at Louisiana Superdome, which seemed big, but it didn't matter. So, anyway, the, broadcast, the game was broadcast by CBS. And 30% of the TV audience, or 17.5 million homes, watched the game. It earned a deals of rating of 21.5, which made it the second highest at the time for a championship game other, after the 79 showdown between Magic and Bird. So like Patrick Ewing and Sam Perkins would tip off. Unfortunately, North Carolina would have an 8 nothing lead thanks to one... And all of that... So yeah, Ewing got goaltending four times, so North Carolina got all eight points. Although John, uh, John Thompson said to Ewing, make your presence known and not worry about goaltending calls while attempting to block shots. you got to make it known. Well, North Carolina did finally make a shot with like eight minutes eight minutes past to make it 12 to 10. Like physically made the basket. At halftime... North Carolina was uh, down 32-31. No big deal. And they traded baskets. And all the way. The Tar Heels wanted to hit their four corners offense to run out of the game clock. The only problem is, back in 82, there was no shot clock. So they could hold on the ball as much as they could. Anyway, they were trying to do whatever they could. All that. However, it was back and forth. With 57 seconds left, Eric Floyd, a 12-foot shot, making it 62-61. Then North Carolina set up for shot. Black to Jordan. And Michael Jordan, the freshman, where he was a freshman, with 15 seconds left, shot. And good, North Carolina left 63-62. And I don't blame you if you remember this game. The 82 title game is the time Michael Jordan made the winning shot to win the NCAA title. But there was more to it. So anyway. It was huge and all that. Fred Brown needed to find somebody. So he thought he saw Sleepy Floyd at the corner of his eye. Passing the ball. One problem though. Wrong jersey. It was a white jersey. And it was James Worthy's ball. Who ran out some of the clock. But then was fouled by Smith. Worthy went to the line for two free throws. But he missed. Probably on purpose. Sleepy Floyd tried to throw a key basket, but he missed. And North Carolina survived 63-62 in front of 61,000 fans. Which was, like, amazing what could happen. Patrick Ewing led Georgetown with 23 points and 11 rebounds. Meanwhile, James Worthy put up 28 points for North Carolina and was named the MVP of the Final Four. MJ put up 9 rebounds to lead the team, and Jimmy Black had 9 assists. So, for Georgetown, Fred Brown put up four points, Patrick Ewing, 23, Eric Floyd, 18, Mike Hancock, no points, Tony Jones, two points, Bill Martin, no points, Eric Smith, 14 points, Gene Smith, no points, Ed Spriggs, a free throw. North Carolina, Jimmy Black only had four points, Jim Braddock, no points, Chris Burris, one point, Matt Doherty, four, MJ had 16, Sam Perkins with 10, Buzz Peterson with nothing, and James Worthy for 28. So... It was amazing, all that. His Aaroness did a good job. Coach Smith got lots of letters and all that. Anyway, Dean Smith actually had coached North Carolina at six Final Fours and three national title games before 82, and North Carolina went 0-3. So North Carolina finally got their national title they were craving, and you know what? They became a powerhouse and all that. Although his sec the second title was 93 when Coach Smith led them to a title that I actually talked about, you know, Chris Weber's timeout. As bad as it was for Georgetown, they actually came back two years later to make it 
to the title game against Houston and won the game. So John Thompson did get his title after all. And let's look all that. You know, it was good for Fred Brown because he was the go to that 82 team, but in 84, he ended up winning the title. So it was just fantastic. And Georgetown even went back to the title game in 85, their third title in four years. Their third for title game in four years, so nothing got ruined. Unfortunately, though, Villanova would somehow shock them in one of the greatest upsets of all time. So, yeah, it was huge and all that. MJ would stay for two more years until he got to the 84 draft. Patrick Ewing stayed all four years with Georgetown and was the number one pick in 1985 to the Knicks. And a lot of people said that was biased because the NBA really wanted New York to be back and favorable in NBA circles for the media coverage, too. So that was controversial as itself. But still, I mean, MJ's winning shot can't be stopped. And also, you know, the horrible pass from Fred Brown that went to the wrong team. I feel bad for the guy. I really do. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.